In this video, we're going to be talking about the structure of amino acids. We're also going to be talking about how two amino acids join via a peptide bond to form a dipeptide. We're going to be describing the four levels of protein structure. And finally, I'm going to be finishing up with some exam help. All of these are time stamped so that you can jump to whichever part of the video you need. A little bit of context. Proteins were called the molecules of first importance. It's where the word protein comes from. Proteins are the machinery of the cell. They determine what other molecules are made. And as a result, they determine what the cells look like, what the tissues look like, the organs, and ultimately the organism looks like. Their function is entirely dependent on their shape. And you'll know this um, for example, on your work with enzymes. And you'll come to realise that other proteins, like antibodies, are also entirely dependent on their shape. Proteins are polymers, like carbohydrates, but notice not like lipids. And they're made up of amino acid monomers with a near infinite variety of shapes. Let's start off the content with drawing an amino acid. Uh, and there are some rules to follow. The first thing you are going to do when you draw an amino acid is draw the central carbon with its four bonds. You can draw the amino group, NH2, on one side and the acid group, notice COOH, on the other. Notice the acid group has a carbon atom hydrogen on the top and the R group down the bottom. The R group is the one bit that changes between the amino acids and there are 20 different R groups naturally which mean that there are 20 naturally occurring amino acids. We can use the analogy of R alphabet with a mere 26 letters making an infinite number of words. How peptide bonds form? Going to draw two amino acids. Notice that the acid group on one side is next to the amine group or the amino group on the other. And water is removed to make the dipeptide. And that, of course, is a condensation reaction because water is removed. And notice that this peptide bond is between the C and O of the acid group that is left and the NH that is left from the amine group. If the reaction goes in reverse and the peptide bond is split using water, then it will form two amino acids. Notice that that is hydrolysis, hydro, water, lysis, splitting. So the four levels of protein structure then. Not surprisingly, we're going to start off with the first level, which is primary. And that is the order of the amino acids. So there are 20 different naturally occurring amino acids. And in a protein, they can be in pretty much any order. And it's important that you recognize that the primary structure determines the shape of the protein, but it doesn't make the shape of the protein. At the moment, this is simply a line of amino acids. There is no particular shape. The secondary structure is where this line of amino acids spontaneously forms these regions of either alpha helices or beta pleated sheets. And these shapes are stabilized by hydrogen bonds, which occur as a result of the slightly negative oxygen on one side of the peptide bond and the slightly positive hydrogen on the other side of the peptide bond. Next, we get the third level of structure, which is the tertiary level of structure. 
and this involves further folding of this amino acid chain which has now got alpha helices and beta pleated sheets in it. It now folds to make a bit of a tangle of a protein and this is the level of structure that forms the 3D shape of the protein. Really important that you understand that. And this also, this kind of mess of an amino acid chain with its alpha helices and beta pleated sheets is stabilized by bonds formed between the R groups of the amino acids. And those bonds are either hydrogen bonds, notice hydrogen bonds aren't actually bonds, disulfide bonds, which is where the R groups have sulfur in them, ionic bonds, and hydrophobic and hydrophilic interactions. This is required by OCR and Edexcel. Hydrophobic R groups will stick together and hydrophilic R groups will be equally attracted to each other. Heating breaks hydrogen bonds, hydrophilic and hydrophobic interactions and ionic bonds and that causes a change in the tertiary structure which we call the protein denaturing. Finally, there is quaternary structure, and this is where there is more than one polypeptide chain that makes up a protein. Let's cover a few exam questions that I've seen on this topic, some of which are knowledge and recall and some of which are a more application. So first one is if the R group is CH3, draw out the structure of the amino acid. So here you start with your four bonds around your carbon, you add on your amine and your acid group, your hydrogen group, and the other bond is the CH3 that's been given to you. Number two, you might be asked to identify the R group, at which point you need to be able to identify the amine group, the acid group and the hydrogen and whatever is left is the R group. Number three, draw out the reaction of two amino acids bonding and name the bond. So you need to draw out those two amino acids. Remember you start with that central carbon and you remember that the acid group has got a carbon in it, COOH. Draw them out next to each other and remember to circle the OH group from the acid and an H from the amine to make your water and label the peptide bond between the CO of the, the remainder of the carboxylic acid group and the NH of the amine group. Finally, you might be given a diagram like this and asked to name group X bond Y and the level of structure shown. Notice that the name of X is an amino group or an amine group. If you write NH2, you will not get the mark because you haven't named it. Y is a disulfide bond because it involves two sulfurs and it is quaternary because it's involving two polypeptide chains. This is in fact an application question because it's giving you a novel scenario. Another example of an application question is if you were given this example of a polypeptide chain, how would this fold in water? And using your logic of hydrophilic being water loving, hydrophobic being water hating, you simply need to ensure that the hydrophilic amino acids are surrounding the hydrophobic amino acids. And if you were required to explain this, you would want to say that the hydrophilic amino acids are attracted to water and the hydrophobic are repelled by water. Final application question that I've seen is why are some proteins soluble in water? And that's because they will have hydrophilic R groups or hydrophilic amino acids 
which naturally fold to be on the outside of the protein because they are attracted to water. And it is the presence of those on the outside that causes the protein to be soluble. Not surprisingly, there will be some hydrophobic groups as a result on the inside. I'm Biology Carol. If this has been helpful, please do like, subscribe and leave a comment.